basically uh, what I propose in the article and also some other other ones that it, actually modern technologies like AI, uh, social and uh, crypto, uh, also like biology talks them, uh, uh, describes them as the most uh, important three technologies of today, because let's say robotics are downstream of AI. And so uh, with these like three technologies, uh, I think it's actually possible to um, uh, to scale uh, to to achieve a greater scale for your uh, for these ideologies so uh, let's say uh, china can do be uh, uh, better central planning now because of ai and maybe also their cbdc than they were able uh, like 50 years ago or 70 years ago at least that's like that's the proposition you know and uh, but also you could have like more kind of like a sovereign collectives or libertarian kind of communities they could be like better organized um, uh, to today because of, let's say, crypto, uh, uh, mm. because of social. E even if you look like, uh, let's say, uh, as we discussed, Noster, you could have like, at least you have like Bitcoin Lightning, you can do like this zapping, you can do, you can provide tips to people. And yeah, so you it's can, like... Uh... You can have a social network, decentralized social network. So... So it's like uh, uh, with decentralized technology, we can create small uh, sovereign collectives of dozen people that can outperform, out, out say, um, one thousand times larger organizations, right? Yeah, you can go. You can go both uh, uh, into like smaller groups and also like into larger groups, uh, and you can so it you can kind of challenge the limits of of these like ideologies uh, that were previously imposed. You know, so for example. Yeah, you had these like Instagram versus Kodak moment where I don't know Instagram had like fourteen employees or twelve, you know, and uh, like Kodak had like thousand times more uh, employees, but the, like Instagram uh, uh, has beaten Kodak, you know. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so that's like the it's uh, or you know that's like the Kodak moment. Hello and welcome to another episode of Mtambo Desk Podcast. My name is Tuku Mtambo and today I'm joined by Yaku Shimek, a co-founder of Wes Shadal and an author of Wisdom Enterprising. Yaku recently wrote an article about the next frontier in crypto, making communities computable and composable. Yaku, uh, welcome to the show. Hi, Joe. Good to see you. I'm happy that we are doing this second season uh, of Daily Biologisms. And so let, let's discuss uh, another concept. <laughs> yeah, so let's start with your article. You talked about uh, Balaji Silvassan's idea that crypto can make com uh, communities compatible um, or computable and composable. Can you elaborate on uh, what that means and why it's important? Right, so it's uh, Balaji talks about uh, also like uh, DSI, so like decentralized science as the next frontier after decentralized finance. Like uh, decentralized fi decentralized finance is like uh, uh, yeah, people are kind of more more familiar with it. We had the, the DeFi summer in twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two. We had <laughs> uh, various uh, issues with uh, with uh, actually the 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 legacy kind of uh, financial uh, the well the crypto space, but like uh, uh, the CFI, you know. So it was like the centralized kind of finance institutions that uh, were wearing the crypto clothes, but uh, what they were doing uh, in and in, in, in essence was centralized, but uh, with the DeFi protocols, you know, they they were working. They didn't they, they didn't go down, you know. So they were still like pr processing um, transactions, uh, smart contracts, uh, executing smart con contracts. So uh, we, we we saw that DeFi is actually uh, yeah uh, anti fragile and it's. Uh, it's uh, stable, uh, even despite all these like hav havoc and all these like uh, breakdowns. Let's say the FTX fiasco and and um, other uh, other kind of uh, crypto companies, or but like more kind of centralized uh, finance companies before. So, but uh, with the DeSci decentralized science, uh, science you can basically. 
um, you can make uh, science not just open uh, open source but uh, but also like composable like uh, like defi makes uh, finance composable so you can have a, like a scientific paper calling uh, like a function calling another scientific paper and you can uh, track uh, the information su supply chain so uh, that's another biologisms uh, biologism so information supply chain, you, you can see like uh, uh, which paper quotes, which paper, uh, you know, you know, you can call, uh, call out uh, like functions, uh, you know, it's like mm -hmm. a next level after something like, um, uh, you know, in Python, you have these like Jupyter notebooks, uh, or you have uh, something what Wolfram, uh, Wolfram is doing, uh, you know, with their like Wolfram language and their kind of uh, way how to make like documents computable. But this is like kind of like attempt with DSI at the ne next step. And also with like decentralized uh, communities or with uh, computable communities as another biologism. It's uh, like a kind of another uh, attempt at um, something that was like more kind of like uh, artisanal or more kind of like uh, just like more craft than a science, you know, like how to mm, how to actually build the resi resilient communities and high trust communities. And with Web3 and also with AI and uh, social, like the, the three main uh, technologies of today, as Balaji call, calls them, they can all help to make uh, communities computable, uh, composable, and also like portable. So, he, he, I mean, maybe it's good to imagine uh, it with something that is not uh, Web3 web uh, per se, but it's quite hot now, like with the Noster and with the mm -hmm. Bitcoin community, you know, we, they are not really into... <laughs> into DeFi and they would maybe call like uh, all altcoins uh, shitcoins uh, but okay but they came with uh, this like nice innovation of like uh, okay it's based on cryptography so why uh, you have like your uh, public key and private key and it's like um, it's it's a protocol uh, where yeah it's like a decentralized um, mm, uh, social networking uh, where, uh, where you can uh, you you own it yeah like you yeah. own your name uh, okay your your public key and also you you own uh, like your private key and so uh, and it's it's connected with bitcoin lightning right so but you can uh, this is an example of uh, making it portable so you can use like you can choose which client you will be using yeah. you know and they provide various like um, services as uh, smart uh, regulators so uh, this is another co concept of Balaji, like you want to have a competition between smart regulators. So uh, smart regulator is uh, a regulator that has a, a good, uh, like uh, false positive and false negative rate, like uh, like low uh, low rates of mistakes. Basically, you know, like they they are able to ban bad actors that are uh, real bad actors, uh, and they don't censor just like people who are like normal who are just like want to air their opinions they you might not agree with them but they're like uh like doing some kind of uh inquiries uh in the in, in good faith you know like they are proposing some arguments they might be bad arguments like uh not uh, not sophisticated ones or they might be misinformed uh but they are good actors so you the, so the smart regulators are basically Mm, trying to ban bad actors and also can uh, provide some kind of uh, ranking uh, of good actors. So and rating of good actors. So like, like imagine Uber with five star ra rating, right? So bad actors are like uh, kind of like scammers. You don't want them in a marketplace, but you want to have like good faith actors who uh, might have various quality, let's say, of their uh, output, you know, of their products, their services, or like their content that they're producing producing and you want to have algorithms that prioritize uh, good content, uh, like a good quality content and uh, ideally uh, things like uh, that uh, that are the news you can use. So as Balaji calls it, like uh, something that uh, 
can boost your uh, learning, earning, uh, and also uh, burning in, in a sense of working out. So something like health, uh, uh, health, wealth, uh, and truth. So truth as the first. So truth, uh, health, wealth. It's kind of like uh, the the priorities. So you want to have these kind of social networks uh, and uh, or these kind of communities that uh, that are built around uh, technological progress civism and around uh values like truth health and wealth so and uh, and yeah but uh, with uh, with uh, innovation like noster you can like for example have a various um mm, uh, that's that's like one protocol but you can have like various providers of uh, uh of like these decentralized social network uh net, net, network services so yeah, and uh, yeah, that's fa fascinating. And uh, you also talk about how these ideas can scale in both uh, libertarian and um, egalitarian directions. Uh, can you elaborate on that, please? Right. So, uh, okay. So, uh, uh, Taleb, Nassim Taleb has this idea of fractal localism, and he's basically... Uh, he, he, he giving a kind of interesting example, nice example that uh, a, a person can be a libertarian on a federal level, like in the US context, you know, like on a federal level, uh, but at the same time, he can be like a re Republican uh, on a uh, on a state level and even like a democrat on a county level and then like a socialist on a city level and communist within his family you know so like the same uh same person can have like these various like ideologies but they're like um they're not scale free but they're uh they are dependent on a scale, so they are not fractal or scale free. The uh, scale scale free that's like uh, the same word. Fractal and scale free are the same uh, synonyms, uh, it, which means that they are scale dependent. So you can be like libertarian uh on a like a really large scale like a federal uh federal kind of uh, level of government in the u.s context but you could be also communist but uh, only within your family you know you don't like issue invoices or like okay i <laughs> yeah, to your kid or something like that so that's like uh, talib's idea of fractal localism and talib is opposed to uh something that he calls uh abstract universalism it's like kantian abstract universalism and he's also opposed to like a monoculture of uh, na nationalism and also kind of like a absorbing monolithic uh, nationalism of modern modern era you know it's like 200 years old uh, like this kind of like uh, these nation states uh, kind of uh, idea before we had city states and it was like more kind of like fractal and more uh, like smaller scale and more focused on trade routes and trade and and uh, alexander bard also talks a lot uh, like who you had on 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 your podcast the swedish philosopher that uh, we did like two interviews with him already so uh and yeah Taleb has this idea that basically these uh, these uh, ideologies don't scale past certain point you know like uh, communism works in the family but doesn't work on a city level you know but maybe uh yeah you could be more socialist mm -hmm. on a city level than let's say on a country level you know so yeah. the the higher the scale the more kind of freedom you should you should allow and yeah, this is something like uh, that. Uh, we 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 could go deeper uh, in 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 these areas of like okay, abstract universalism. It means something like. Um, it's it's not natural so like in a in a extreme or ad absurdum it would mean like uh you you bring you take your kid to a school you know in the morning and in the evening or in the afternoon uh, you would just pick uh, another random uh, random kid because you know you love mm -hmm. like uh, uh uh like you love the humanity as an abstract concept but but nobody is behaving like this you actually love your children more than just like some kind of random Random person or uh, a yeah. random kid in an abstract kind of sense, but you know, parents they they uh, of course you prefer kind of your your kin and your um, your own children. So like this abstract universalism is like. Um, 
it's kind of absurd at least uh, according to uh, Talab and this uh, also this kind of monolithic nationalism it's kind of like uh, erasing the the like natural cultures and like uh, the, the, the the multiplicity of cultures and traditions and uh, trying to kind of impose mm-hmm. some kind of like top down uh, kind of modern uh, uh, identity that is kind of reductive and monolithic uh, mono, uh, creating monoculture so uh, but th- this is Talab's idea and uh, basically uh, what I propose in the article and also some other other ones that it, actually modern technologies like AI uh, social and uh, crypto uh, also like biology talks them uh, uh, describes them as the most uh, important three technologies of today because let's say robotics are downstream of AI and so uh with these like three technologies uh, i think it's actually possible to um, uh, to scale uh, to to achieve a greater scale for your uh, for these ideologies so uh, let's say uh, china can do be- uh, uh, better central planning now because of ai and maybe also their cbdc than they were able uh, like 50 years ago or 70 years ago at least that's like that's the proposition you know and uh, but also you could have like more kind of like a sovereign collectives or libertarian kind of communities they could be like better organized um uh to today because of let's say crypto uh uh mm. because of social e- even if you look like uh, let's say uh, as we discussed noster you could have like at least you have like bitcoin lightning you can do like this zapping you can do you can provide tips to people and yeah, so it's can, like uh... you can have a social network decentralized social network so so it's like uh, uh, with decentralized technology, we can create small uh, sovereign collectives of dozen people that can out- outperform, say, um, one thousand times larger organizations, right? Yeah, you can go. You can go both uh, uh, into like smaller groups and also like into larger groups, uh, and you can so it you can kind of challenge the limits of of these like ideologies uh, they were previously imposed. You know, so for example. Yeah, you had these like Instagram versus Kodak moment where I don't know Instagram had like fourteen employees or twelve, you know, and uh, like Kodak had like thousand times more uh, employees, but the, like Instagram uh, uh, has beaten Kodak, you know. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so that's like the it's uh, or you know that's like the Kodak moment, you know. But now with the AI, with like Chat GPT or GPT four, and with the other kind of like. Uh, tools in this area you can you can e- e- imagine even like smaller teams you know you, you can have um, i don't know two or three or f- four people start up uh like beating much larger institutions because now with ai you can uh, you know you can maybe 10x you can have like 10x uh, less uh, employees mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To create a functional MVP and to challenge like uh, established co- uh, competitors, established companies. So uh, yeah, but like all these technologies, they can help you to um, to create like uh, team dashboards, uh, you know, better to to see like uh, who is contributing what. Uh, uh, who is contributing like what kind of content, uh, what kind of quality output. And um, so basically it can help you to create like a horizontal community resumes. So it's not just like, I don't know, resume uh, with references from your bosses, but it's like continuous kind of uh, uh, performance ass- uh, assessment also like uh, through your output or through your peers, through your collaborators. You know, like you could uh, award like NFTs and kind of crypto credentials, badges to to people, and um, and importantly, this 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 can be today recorded on chain. So it's like it's also portable, and it's uh, also like open source, but open state. You know, and you could uh, you could do c- computations on this kind of data. So that's. Um, you know, it's not just like, let's say, some proprietary data, like in Web2, like on servers of Twitter or LinkedIn, but it's like, imagine LinkedIn, maybe, but portable and, um, and yeah. open source. Yeah, yeah and uh, what about the idea of uh, collective uh, utilitarianism, which is uh, different from uh, individual utilitarianism and abstract universalism? 
how does that fit into this picture Right. So like Balaji talks about the importance of dashboard management. So like he says, like Silicon Valley and Asia are managed by dashboard management. So like dashboard management is like you see like what's happening in your city on like a, you have like kind of a, like a bird eye view or on in your company. So dash, dashboard management, right? And the second idea is like team dashboards in, instead of individual uh, dashboards, because uh, Balaji often talks about Twitter as uh, being like kind of zero sum uh, environment where you have like uh, individual uh, individuals who are competing. There is like one leaderboard of like just individuals. You you know you think that you are just like uh, liking someone or retweeting uh, someone, and it's just but it's. Um, but at the end it's like a zero sum uh world because uh, you are uh, like just fighting for yourself you know to gain as much uh, influence and uh, as much um mm, uh yeah followers as possible and retweets and you don't see some kind of like a, a team dashboard on twitter you know like you don't see let's say how your web3 uh, uh, uh tribe is doing or how your let's say solana tribe or bitcoin maximalist tribe or something is doing but you are trying to be the the best the the, the loudest bitcoin maximalist or uh, uh on, on twitter and it's uh, i mean it's dangerous in many ways uh, it's uh, but it's uh, but imagine you would have like a team dashboard like let's say in a company when when you are doing like um, enterprise sales uh, Balaji describes it you are using uh, like team dashboard so of course like you also want to be the best uh, salesperson uh, uh, on a team but you also see how the team is doing how many like uh, deals are closed this quarter uh, what, uh, what what is the incentive structure what uh, what how many deals we need to do to to get the bonus you know as a team so uh, and or imagine like a basketball game where you see a uh, the performance of the team you know like how you are scoring did you win the game you know yeah what is uh, can you you know so it's just like you see the the the, the performance you it's not just like individual uh, yeah individual leaderboard but like team team dashboard uh yeah and so this is the 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 idea of collective utilitarianism it's origin it's like from a ancient chinese mohism there's like an a um, philosophical uh yeah yes yeah, like uh, modes is like the one philosopher and it's like his kind of uh ideology or idea there yeah. and it's a bit opposed or it's quite different from the the individual uh individual utilitarianism of let's say something like uh, effective altruism but it's also like different from um these like kind of monolithic uh abstract uh, uh, universalism or the, the 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 kind of monoculture of today's nationalism so uh, imagine you have like a like a band uh, or a clan uh, or a kind of like a small team or a small startup and you are trying to optimize uh, the team per performance or your kind of like tribe performance uh, but it's something around like so, uh, Dunbar number so like uh, let's say 100 people or 150 that's the the Dunbar number but today it could be it could be like tens of people you know it doesn't need to be even 100 because of ai and uh, uh and um yeah crypto you can yeah. you can make more with less so generally with technology you can do more with less you know yeah uh so yeah yeah but that's uh yeah you know that's kind of like you uh, yeah but technically uh, but you could also you could have like a startup let's say a ai startup uh today uh with all these like breakthrough uh technologies of like a couple of months ago like uh, gp g uh chat gpt gpt4 uh, you could have like two two person startup and beat like big companies yeah. but uh also you could uh with these technologies i think it would be possible to go beyond dunbar number or like uh, some kind of like small kind of uh, communities um uh into like larger larger ones maybe uh you could be 10,000 people who are actually uh creating a high trust society uh even mm -hmm. uh, past the the Dunbar number of 150 people 
uh i that's it's kind of like an open question but it should be possible because like with technology you can do more with less so uh it's that's possible true. to to scale uh these kind of uh tribes uh uh into uh, yeah a larger uh hmm. a lar- larger scale yeah uh i think that's an interesting perspective uh moving forward you also talked about uh the idea of tech uh, i mean uh network uh, archipelagos which are highly aligned uh, cloud communities that need to prove uh, sufficient traction online before uh, printing in quotes uh, themselves onto the land. Can you explain more about this uh, concept? Yeah, right. So like Balaji has uh, this idea of the network state and uh, and this is like the, the ultimate state of some kind of like uh, community that first uh, grows from the cloud and gets printed on the land. So you build a high trust environment, maybe in VR uh, and in uh, in some kind of group chats uh, and and then uh, you 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 try to to crowdfund territory later you know so you you first you have a, like a startup society that can be started by anyone with a laptop and so you have a leader with a clear moral innovation of let's say sugar bad and uh, uh web3 good you know or mm-hmm. you you can you just build it around i don't know formal wear you know so formal wear is good and you build a community that is like everybody is like wearing some kind of high fashion or formal wear or something uh, similar like that mm-hmm. it could be like keto kosher society uh, just where the sugar is bad or low carb society just where you focus I don't know or uh, carnivore society where you eat mostly meat I don't know so mm-hmm. but uh, but then the next step which is like a much higher bar is like network union where you you have a highly aligned community that is capable of collective action where you actually imagine like you have a community of let's say 100 people and you uh, send out the tweet so you tweet some something some call to action or let's say uh, a, a member of a community of some like uh, network union of graphic designers is like unfairly attacked and there is some kind of like a attempt at cancellation of of this person and now a uh, hundred or 99 uh, um uh, members of this hundred member community would like uh, do something in support of this like one member who is like unfairly attacked. So they would like they you would get like <laughs> ninety nine retweets of that uh, tweet from from that community because they are like uh, doing collective action. So imagine something like the the trade union. Mm-hmm where you you don't want to be the the person who is like uh not not participating on in the strike i don't know how is the the english uh, word for this but it's like yes. you know it's like everybody strike, should yeah. be it should be on strike yeah but the, the person who is trying to destroy the strike you know by not participating so uh you don't want Traitor. to be that per- traitor something like traitor right so mm-hmm. uh, you want to uh, just like you know it's like everybody should participate so something like uh, uh very similar so like i don't know on tweet on twitter it's not a highly aligned community because you you if you have million followers and uh, you, you post something you get like mm-hmm. 2000 likes uh, that's yeah. balaji's example but if it was like a highly aligned community you would get um I don't know, close to a million likes, you know. So, yeah. uh, so, but uh, in, in another way, how to look at it is like, uh, in, you know, if it's like a really highly aligned community, uh, you don't need to have million followers, but it's enough to have like uh, two thousand, and yeah. uh, and if you get close to two thousand likes, you know, it's like almost hundred percent, like nineteen something percent, ninety nine percent of uh of your members are are retweeting or liking mm-hmm. uh, so you you have a, like a similar kind of um, power or influence uh um, um in this like social network sense as uh, if you had like million followers on twitter so that's a, like a nice nice illustration of network union and so the network archipelago is like the third uh, level where you are crowdfunding the land yeah. crowdfunding like a real estate let's say 
you want to build like some kind of like accelerator together or some kind of like community center uh, and uh, or let's say some kind of place where you could um, the community uh, like the members or something like a hacker house where you could also uh, like uh, some some of your members can live uh, together mm-hmm. but let's say there is some kind of like a incubator or, or a cafe or something like where uh, they or some kind of gym you know so it doesn't like kind just, of a digital yeah. monastery yeah. yeah digital monastery as uh, alexander bart talks about it yeah so something like that yeah uh, yeah where it's uh, not just office space and not just like co-living space but it it's uh, it's like multi-purpose space so uh, yeah mm-hmm. i think that's uh, fascinating and i think uh, one example i could mention uh, of these uh, communities in action is jury our jua which is focused on building uh, solutions uh, for startup society and positioning itself as a dev god. And another example, like uh, dev gov, uh, the gov, like yeah, a decentralized uh, governance. governance. Yes, yeah, sorry, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's true, decentralized <laughs> governance. And yeah, just to mention another example is also DAO stack, which is focused on creating um, a new type of uh, decentralized organization that is more flexible and uh, adaptable than traditional corporations. Yeah. So, well, as we come to the end of this uh, episode, where do you see this uh, going in the future? What are the implications for startup society or as, or society as a whole? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so like we can even like discuss uh, with Zesha here as a, uh, at least I- idea like where we want to go directionally. So like um, mm-hmm. just a small plug from us, like because, OK, we are uh, co-founders of Wazesha DAO or the Wazesha kind of I- idea. And we we have worked with uh, Sote Hub and with uh, Sote ICT clubs uh, uh, in Kenya uh, around Voitown before. So uh yes yeah, so we were at the time we were working with 12 schools and uh, now the the program we are not part of sota hub anymore but uh yeah i'm a co-founder but like um, we cooperate still with them uh on some some occasions and they scaled like past 100 schools but now also they focus more on agriculture clubs uh, and uh, and merging technologies uh, and digital uh, skills with also some kind of agriculture uh, kind of programs so but anyhow but uh, at the time when we were there we had like uh, sote ICT clubs so it means like everyone for digital technology kind of clubs uh, uh, sote means like all of us in Swahili so and so and then we had uh, within these uh, clubs so th- this could be uh, understood as startup societies right yeah. like maybe today we would uh, not not um, uh, yeah something directionally because with startup society you want to have like a unique and clear moral innovation with us uh, the moral innovation here was like you can actually uh, you can have rural startup hubs on rural student startups. So you, it could be like in small towns or, or in rural areas, doesn't need to be in big cities like Nairobi or in Bratislava or in Silicon Valley, you know, San Francisco or New York, but yeah. it can be like in, in the middle of uh, Tsavo, you know, like in the, uh, in the middle of middle nowhere. Of, yeah, between, no, not really nowhere, you know, <laughs> but like Void Town is like, yes. it, now it's, it's grown on a big bigger but it was like a couple of tens of th- thousands of people uh, yeah. back then you know it's not a big city definitely and uh, so still a town have- yeah and uh, especially Taita Tavata, where we were, it's like a really like low population density because of Tsavo National Park, and there is like a lot of um, a lot of wildlife, uh, human conflict, uh, yeah. and. Um, it's a semi-arid area and you have Mombasa like 150 kilometers uh, uh, around 100, yeah, 150 kilometers from Voi and you have Nairobi, I don't know 500 kilometers or Four, you... 400 and something, yeah, close to Okay, okay, yeah. okay, so yes so, right, so it's uh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's, it's a great Sample. place mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, but it's a good example so, but like, okay, startup societies would be something like uh, sort of ICT clubs um, 
and then uh, you you within these clubs we had like uh, training companies there were like uh, around 20 people there right yeah uh, 15 20 15 to 20. 20 that was maximum yeah and then we had another modality we, which were like student startups right so um, yeah. yeah yeah and then we had like uh, this methodology of practice enterprises network so that yeah. it's based in Germany but it's like international organization that serves as a clearing house for this like um, vocational education companies so like they're like student companies uh, but they are like for educational purposes only right mm -hmm. so we we were doing uh, like uh, our clubs and they were focused on digitalization or digital skills and also entrepreneurship skills but it was all uh, kind of like this uh, scanner version of digitalization so it's like this in intermediate step of uh, like you are bringing something that was like that has an analog like a physical analog uh, analog uh, version that it has like a Mm -hmm. uh, physical version and you are digitizing it and making it like a like imagine like scanning a paper right so yeah. now you have a scan but there is a, a, an equivalent in the in the physical analog wor world and what we are trying to do with Wazesha um, and like taking small steps uh, as a like kind of side project but like as a startup as well uh, you, you know like uh, let's say uh, cryptocurrency is a digitally native form of money then let's yeah. say like DAOs are like a digitally native form of, of uh, organizations right yeah. and then you have like nfts uh you you can have some crypto credentials and so the question is like what is the digitally native version of education and digitally native version of like vocational education and mm -hmm. uh and like with these uh concepts uh, you can like uh you can make them like composable uh computable and also portable so you could um yeah i mean you, you could make some computations and like uh you know it's like you know mm -hmm. you you have uh like ether scan or uh, on solana we we were on like uh, building our DAO and also our token on on solana but then you you can you know you have like um, you don't need to ask let's say this clearing house in germany like okay uh, which are the most active student companies or student startups that was uh, our modality like a different modality where student startups uh, like uh, of four people or five people yeah and you don't need to ask some kind of teacher or someone uh, to to give you advice which are the most active, but you would see the see it on chain, you know. Yeah, it's just yeah. like you don't rely, let's say, on some kind of uh, reporting on a, like a annual basis or quarter basis, and th there can be some mistakes. You know, it's just someone like who is like. Uh, uh just doing these calculations in some excel spreadsheet and then posting it somewhere and and you have to rely you have to trust uh, on uh, this third party or this clearing house but uh, but now you could have like you could do your uh trustless uh open source uh, uh open data kind of uh statistic calculation and and uh, much more because it's you can also like do like like composable finance or like a DeFi, but like also in this like kind of a learning uh, environment which is like more mm -hmm. secure. So that that's just like an example of what uh, uh, where you could like for example even like with uh, Wesesha DAO or like with uh, Wesesha uh, Coin like. It, this is like also for us it's just like an, a learning experience like something like we 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 uh, we created a DAO then a chartered DAO on uh, realms like mm -hmm. the the Solana uh, thing mm -hmm. then you created a token and now you can see like uh, who are the holders of the token right and it's yeah. like for for web3 it's kind of natural like you 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 have these statistics you know but like uh, imagine uh, this uh, be natural for uh, for student startups you know like mm -hmm. it, it, they're first of all they're global so it, they're it, they're not based let's say only like in Kenya or in Slo on Slovak jurisdiction or Kenyan jurisdiction but since they're for uh, educational purposes only you know it's like, yeah. it doesn't matter for example junior achievement that they have their their way of doing like these uh, student companies and they are also they don't follow like a, every like kind of um 
um, uh, legal uh, kind of detail of yeah. uh, how to do business in Slovakia, but they have their student uh, company methodology that is global, right? Yeah. Uh, but And also Balaji has this concept of mirror table, which is like... A, uh, like a mirror table that is uh, mirroring the uh, like the the the, the equity uh, the, the venture venture capital equity of a certain startup mm-hmm. and uh, so it doesn't need to be in a spreadsheet somewhere at some computer of some like venture uh, capitalist or some investor in Silicon Valley but it can be also mirrored on chain and so like with the, with the, these these kind of concepts uh, you could I, I think you can start like with, with education. Uh, for educational purposes only because you are working with like uh, vocational education and uh, uh, this idea of uh, student startups uh, or practice enterprises or training companies or yeah uh-huh. uh, yeah yeah student startups I think is good a good idea and so they, there are no like legal kind of uh, uh, requirements for for these uh, you know because um, or or if they are they, yeah, they are much smaller you know and you can uh-huh. le- I think this is the way how you could create like the the digitally native uh, form of uh, vocational education and uh, create also computable communities because you can um Mm. You you can see how active these uh, these uh, startups stu- uh, student startups are basically uh, because uh, all this data uh, or many of these data will be put on chain, you know, mm-hmm. like uh, like DAOs or also individuals like let's say how many crypto credentials do they have uh, if they helped some other team team members within or uh, um, startup society members so you could. You know, it's uh, just okay. It's not just like collecting NFTs or badges, but like um, you, you can have like the various uh, kind of proof points and data from various sources, and you can do like kind of uh, in, independent verification of it. And um, uh, yeah, and you can see it in real time. You know, yeah. developing. So yeah, yeah. I think uh, Jakub, that's a very uh, perfect example um, of uh, Wazesha in action. And uh, I think we are just uh, scratching the surface right now. Uh, digital cent- uh, d- decentralized uh, tech has the potential to um, revolutionize everything from finance to governance, um, to education, to social media. And uh, we are already seeing that impact of uh, decentralized uh, finance or DeFi and decentralized science or DeSci. But the next frontier uh, is making communities uh, computable and uh, composable. And I think this is where we'll see the most exciting uh, developments in the coming years. Um, Jakub, thank you so much for uh, joining me today and uh, sharing your insights uh, with um, Tambodes uh, podcast audience. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, it's been a pleasure, Duke, and uh, hope to see you soon. Yeah, hope to see you soon too. Um, well, that brings us to the end of this episode. We hoped uh, you, you enjoyed uh, the conversation with Jakub Shimek. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe, give this episode a thumbs up, and be sure to come back next week for another episode. Until then, this is Drukum Tambo, and don't forget to do good always.